In this tutorial, we will deal with solving problems which involve dealing with the greatest integer function. So, any number, real number x, can be split up into the integer part plus the fractional part of the number. And uh, this is the symbol that is used for the greatest integer function. Now, we have some obvious inequalities which are concerned with the greatest integer function and this will play a role in the problem solving. So, for example, it's obvious that the greatest integer function of x is less than the value of x and is strictly less than the integer value plus 1. So, here you have a less than or equal to and here you have a strict inequality. Then uh, some more standard um, properties of the greatest integer function may be useful when you simplify expressions. For example, if x belongs to the real number and a is an integer, then the following equation is can be easily verified to be true. Then there is an inequality which is also this is the first inequality there is another inequality which can also be proved by brute force and um, may be useful in some simplification for all x y belonging to the real numbers now there are two more formulae that are very easily verifiable and may be worth memorizing so I just write them down here so for x which is a real number and k which is a natural number this is equal to this and uh, this can be also very easily verified and uh, I shall write one well-known equation for the fractional part so the fractional part of k x k into the fractional part of x is actually equal to the fractional part of k x so these are a few uh, and there will be a few more but let's just go ahead and um, solve a few problems and that will get us used to some of the standard moves while solving these problems now these problems do involve a few ideas basic and simple ideas so we will pick up a lot of standard tricks by solving a few problems and we will quite and we'll solve quite a few problems now here's the first problem you're supposed to find the value of x uh, that satisfies this equation now note that we begin with an inequality so watch this move some of these moves will be new for those people who are looking at these ideas for the first time now this is equal to 10 times the integer value of x so the first simple observation that happens quite often is to note that x square plus 9 is going to be an integer that is because the right hand side is an integer further in this particular example we find that the integer value of x will belong to the set of natural numbers positive numbers and the reason is that the LHS in this case is always positive so every bit of this information could be useful at this stage we use an inequality that we've already mentioned in the previous um, slide so this is definitely less than or equal to 10x now what this implies is that x square plus 9 minus 10x is less than or equal to 0. Now what this means is that we can see that this is easily factorizable. So x minus 1 
times x minus 9 is less than or equal to 0. And from this, we note that the values of x lie between 1 and 9. So the inequality has given us a range of values that need to be satisfied and we need to search for the solution in this range. So already we've made some good headway into the problem. So let's continue. Now we make another observation which is that x square plus 9 belongs to the set of natural numbers. Further, what we notice is from this is that 10 divides x square plus 9, which means that the set of values or the values in this range are 1, x square is equal to 1, then 11, and then 21, and so on all the way till x equal to 9, which means that 80, 81 plus 9, so all the way till 81. Now, out of these possible values of x square, we now use brute force and see which of these actually satisfies this equation and we land up with the fact that x square is equal to now we have a finite set of values to search for our solution and we find that x square is equal to 1 and 61 and 71 and 81 satisfy the equation so this part the last part i highlight is a brute force in a sample space which is not very large and finally x therefore is equal to 1 root 61 root 71 and 9 so as you can see that a host of simple ideas leads to a solution of the problem and uh, we've already picked up quite a few standard tricks within the one problem now with this background let us try and um, solve another problem so before we get to the uh, next problem we just make a small note a uh, expression like this we just make a small note an expression like this which is x square minus 3x divided by 2 is equal to 1 implies that 1 is less than or equal to x square minus 3x over 2 is strictly less than 2. In other words, an equation like this is nothing but an inequality of this sort. So, this is very obvious and with this background, let us try and solve another algebraic problem where the question is to find the values of x that satisfy this particular equation. So I'm going to put up this equation now and uh, we'll actually solve this problem. So for this problem, once again, uh, we're going to use the ideas of inequalities. So let's see how. What we notice here is um, that um, the inequality that is being okay so the RHS is going to be an integer so let's say that it's represented by k now what this means as per what we've just discussed is that k is less than or equal to 2x plus 1 divided by 3 is strictly less than k plus 1. Also, this statement itself has an inequality which says that k is strict less than or equal to x 
is strictly less than k plus 1. Now what we can do is combine the information in these two inequalities and this will help us to narrow down on the range of possible values of x and then after that similar to the previous problem we shall produce by go ahead by brute force so now here's a clever way of combining these two inequalities one and two so what this means is that um, let's um, further simplify this this would mean that 3k minus 1 divided by 2 is less than or equal to x and is less than 3k plus 3 minus 1 that's plus 2 divided by 2 and this second inequality we shall just write it as it is k is less than or equal to x is less than k plus 1 so now let's combine these two inequalities in the following way uh, so I'll just make some space here so as you can see um, none of the steps is really very difficult but we will soon make uh, good progress on this problem I think this was 3k minus 1 so watch this now these two imply that 3k minus 1 divided by 2 is definitely less than k plus 1 as you can see just combining this with this and in fact uh, k is much the same way strictly less than 3k plus 2 by 2 now we proceed to solve both these inequalities 3k minus 1 is less than 2k plus 2 and this would mean that k is strictly less than 3 and here we get uh, 2k is less than 3k plus 2 which means that k is strictly greater than minus 2. So you can see that this is a great advancement on the problem. This would mean that the allowable values for k are k is equal to either minus 1 or 0 or 1 or 2. So these are the possible values of k within the constraints of this problem. Now already we have discussed how to deal with these equations when you know the value of the k just to remind you k is the set of integer values of x so x is an integer which can take the value of k and we've just figured out what are the possible values of k in this problem so we now deal with each case so now it's a case by case analysis so first we deal with this equation 2x plus 1 by 3 is equal to let's say minus 1 and then follow it up now this um, then in turn we can repeat this problem with 0 and then 1 and 2 now let us deal with the case k equal to minus 1 so that would mean that this is equal to minus 1 now this as we just explained is equivalent to an inequality of this form minus 1 is less than or equal to 2x plus 1 over 3 less than or equal to 0 now caution we can easily find a range of values of x that satisfy this inequality but that is not the answer this equation already imposes an inequality so which is minus remember that uh, k is equal to minus 1 so that means minus 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 0 now these two inequalities have to be simultaneously satisfied to get the range of x for the case k equal to minus 1 and as you can see this is simply um, minus 2 
is um, less than equal to x is less than minus half this is the inequality that is coming from the first condition and in addition to that we have another condition which is this so together together these two gives a range of x as follows which is minus 1 is less than equal to x is less than equal to minus half so this is the range of values of x that satisfy the equation for a equal to minus 1 similarly one can deal with k equal to 0 and k is equal to 1 and k is equal to 2 to get more values of x that satisfy this equation so at this stage I think I just go ahead and write down the end answer for you to verify so in addition to the case where we got this for k is equal to minus 1 we will get some more intervals which is so this union 0 is less than equal to x is less than 2 union 5 by 2 is less than equal to x is less than 3 so this will be the answer to this problem as you can see um, you can reach to the answer only if you go ahead with systematic way but each of the steps is fairly elementary and that is why this is a favorite topic in all the examinations that we mentioned now you could do one last thing and I'll leave it as a homework just please try and plot both the functions here I mean y is equal to this because both are in some sense because the value the function inside the bracket is um, a nice linear function so it would not be impossible to plot these two functions so the first function and the second function and see the overlap and therefore the overlap of this two functions is basically these intervals so you could do a quick check with brute force plotting in this particular problem and with that we come to the end of this lesson and we'll pick up some more very interesting problems in this topic in the next section